put it in an Aussie way, I was raised as rough as guts. Went to a military school at the age of 12 because my dad thought that was probably the best thing and the sanest thing for me to do. 1997, at the age of 18, I found myself in Kosovo and Afghanistan 2001. I was there, but I knew that I didn't belong there and I never wanted to be there in the first place. Thank you so much for your company this morning. Kiwi director Erin Wilson's documentary Dog's Best Friend was filmed at Sydney's Canine Behaviour Expert Dog Psychology Centre, which is run by ex-sniper Jacob Lezak, who has spent time in both Kosovo and Afghanistan. 30 dogs at a time are housed here, many of which have been abandoned and they're set to be euthanised or have been brought in by clients unable to handle their pet's aggressive side, particularly after they have attacked a human or another dog. Now, Jacob believes many of these dogs have been misunderstood and he uses water therapy, aromatherapy and massage therapy, among many other things, to rehabil rehabilitate them. Director Erin Wilson joins us now. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, um, Interesting story, the way this all came about. You, so you're an actor based in Auckland, mm. um, but you'd always wanted to make a documentary. Yeah, I just, um, most actors end up kind of evolving and, and wanting to kind of create their own work, and that was the stage I was at. And yeah, I, I decided to uh, make something, and I, I didn't want to be told, no, you can't do it. Um, and I didn't want to kind of like fill out application forms for funding and stuff. So I thought I'm going to make a documentary and no one can stop me and I'm going to start. Oh, I like that attitude. And, and yeah. you did. So how did you come across Jacob and his work? Um, well, I actually, it was my mother who um, <laughs> actually got in touch and said, oh, love, there's this great guy on YouTube who does amazing things with dogs. I grew up in a dog house with, with fa not literally in a dog house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, those treats looked good. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so um, mum put me on to, to Jacob and I actually cold emailed him and said, you know, I want to make a documentary. Has anyone ever done anything like this? He said, no, come over, stay as long as you like and let's start doing it. And we did. So you didn't say anything like, hey, what's your experience? <laughs> have you done any documentaries no. before? No, and I, look, I could have been asking him that as well. Mm, yeah. um, and because I didn't know what, what I was quite getting myself into um, either. But um, yeah, I'd like to say now that we are really close mates. And uh, I mean, that's a really organic way to make a documentary, isn't mm. it? Both uh, in the unknown. What happened when you went over there? Did you just end up staying there with suitcases? Yeah, well, we, we wanted, I knew I wanted to, um, we need to raise some funds and we're going to go the crowdsource funding route. So um, I, we needed to get enough footage to make a Kickstarter video. So uh, we went over there and we, we literally slept on the floor in a caravan on the couch. And Jacob and Jenna, his lovely wife, insisted that we kind of hang out. You know, there was no going back to a motel room at night to charge our camera batteries and regroup. We were literally in amongst the dogs. And um, yeah, we, we just made the Kickstarter video and then we started that and we kind of raised 34 grand. Um, and then we went over proper to kind of, you know. And so uh, how long did them. you film with them for? We, we went about six times over about 18 months and mm -hmm. spent about five to 10 days at a time. Did you know you were on to something special when you first arrived there? You know, when it started unfolding, did you think, this is special? Yeah, yeah. And and at the beginning, I, I was, to be fair, I was probably starting to make an, accidentally making like a 60 minutes kind of newsy thing. And I knew I wanted to make something cinematic. Right. And about the third visit, and the more I got to know Jacob, the man became intriguing. And mm. it was more about dogs. And then I went, ah, I've got to, I feel like I've got to film now. You yeah. know? And that's yeah. when I started to sort of bed in. Because he's an ex-army, as we've mentioned, he's ex-sniper, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Kosovo and Afghanistan. Yes. So yes. he must have had some pretty harrowing tales oh, about yeah. all that. Oh yeah, yeah. As you can imagine, you know, the, the, the chats around the campfire, I mean, there's lots of lots of um, colourful, interesting stuff he talked about um, that didn't make the film in the end. But um, yeah, that's that's the thing with him and his, his wife, Jenna. You know, I realised that I had two real colourful characters and it was about more than just the dogs. And he, you know, I mean, the film opens with a really sobering statistic, doesn't mm. it? 400 dogs a mm. day in Australia mm -hmm. euthanised. Yeah. He takes on some dogs that some people would give up on. So is the adage true that it's not ever the dog, it's always the owners? Do you believe that now? Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm, no, I'm not a dog expert. Sometimes I accidentally get asked these questions where I go, well, I technically don't know because I'm not the dog guy myself. But... Right. I know um, a dog guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jacob, Jacob says himself, you know, that, that the dogs, a, bit, a little bit like children, reflect back the care and attention 
um, that their owners have put into them. So dogs reflect their owners. So say Jacob's got been given a really a dog that's attacked another dog, say mm. like a big mm. brute of a dog, mm -hmm. new dog. What does he do with it? What, what sort of therapies does um, he use, or how does it work? One thing I noticed, which isn't necessarily great for documentary making, is that things happen very slowly. <laughs> right. And so sometimes I was kind of like, okay, like we, when, when's the attack going to happen? When right. When's there going to be a bite or yeah. something? And I need and a it, dramatic moment. Yeah, but with Jacob, we actually never saw him get bitten. Um, although he has certainly been bitten, but he um, he takes time to to read the dog, gets the dog's backstory from the owner. He does this cool thing where he kind of like takes off their collar, and it's like that they have a collar on their whole life often, mm -hmm. and it's like taking all their clothes off and suddenly they're naked, you know. And, and it's also a starting point where they get to shake off their old life, and begin from scratch. And um, look, he does you know he does the things that you mentioned, but um, he has a free running pack of about 15 dogs, and that's where the dogs that are coming in for therapy learn from those dogs and that's those are things that Jacob cannot teach. And know. that was one message I got from that documentary was that, you know, it allowed a dog to be a dog again and that was his big mantra. Did you ever fear for your safety filming it? Because I tell you what, you know, there was some there was some big scary dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah, well we had we had um, like a, you know, like I had a boom I was the sound guy, I shouldn't have been but I was. Um, we had one of those big fluffies on the end of a mic and he said <laughs> keep that keep that up and out of the way of the dog. So we had to watch out for that sort of thing. But um, yeah, we just, Jacob, it's, it's for the dog lovers out there, it wasn't all about, oh, I'm all surrounded by dogs, it's so amazing. It was actually quite serious. Mm. And Jacob was like, don't look at them, not because they'd attack you, but just don't give them your attention because you'll have 15 dogs that aren't uh, um, in kennels and on leads coming over to you. Mm. And that energy combined, I can't say enough, standing amongst that many dogs kind of loose is, is a phenomenal feeling. The energy and the power mm. combined that they have Especially is amazing. that pack mentality as well. Yeah. So you mentioned Jenna, um, mm. Jacob's wife, mm. a bit of a character. She had yeah. a bit of a rough start to life as well, didn't she? She did. She um, Look, Jenna's one of those people, she's amazing. She's such an open book. And she, she told me too much, you know, <laughs> and I was just like, okay, we, we, that can't make it into the doco. But she, um, look, both of them are, are so open and, um, like I say, uh, you know, there was no motel stuff for us. We, mm. we were literally invited into their wow. homes and into their lives. And I, I, in the final making of the documentary, I was very respectful of that. Mm. Um, but, yeah, Jenna's... Um, that, that look, they're so well suited, and we and we, we were at their wedding. We're invited to their wedding, um, and one of their dogs, Malachi, um, he was best man. Um, it was it was a wonderful day. What was her story? Um, Jenna, oh, look, it's in the documentary. I don't want to give too much away, but um, look, from a from a start, um, from the start as a as a baby, um, she was abused basically, yeah, and and not cared for, um, and um, I don't want to give too much away because it's in the film, but. One thing I did notice is with Jacob, not only does he rehabilitate dogs and has dogs there, I ha there were other ex-soldiers, there were troubled kids, there were teenagers, all who, who were all there that we kind of couldn't film for various reasons, who were all basically being kind of treated by Jacob, wow. you know? He, the, <clears throat> their work with the dogs was their therapy, you know? That's interesting, because basically, you know, dogs help, help save other people's lives, mm. and here's Jacob and his team help saving dogs' lives. So beautiful energy through that movie. Absolutely. I thought it was brilliant. Um, what's your favourite part? Because <laughs> oh, um, I like the massaging of the dog. That was yeah, my yeah, favourite that's, part. Yeah, Matt, that's um, Seven, uh, one of the pit bulls. Um, I think I think it was the stuff that we didn't film. Like we, oh, like okay. we. Um, I know it's dry July, but we <laughs> we sat around <laughs> and we had a few little whiskies at night and kind of traded stories and talked about our different worlds because we got to know each other really, really well over the time. Wow! And um, you know, to come away with such a strong bond and friendship at the end of this project, which started off with Mum going, "Hey, love." There's this guy who does interesting things on YouTube. Mm. I, t I thoroughly recommend anyone who's got an idea for a doco, go out and just make it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, I hope you credited your mum in this movie. <laughs> I did. Yeah, it's I did. Good. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Erin's mm. film, Dog's Best Friend, is currently screening in Auckland as part of the New Zealand International Film Festival. It's going to then head to Wellington before moving further south too. You can check out the Film Festival website for ticket details. <laughs>